Join us on YouTube for the Jesus Listens Stories of Prayer web series hosted by Susie McIntyre Eaton. This series features interviews with guests sharing how prayer made an impact in their lives. Subscribe on YouTube now. There's nothing more beautiful or precious about our lives or things that matter than building relationships with people. So really, the rest of all of the things that pull on us really aren't as important as sitting down with people and getting to know them and know their hearts and meet their needs and then listen for opportunities to love them and pour out grace and move towards spiritual things and love them really well. Welcome to the Jesus Calling Podcast. As many of us go about our day-to-day, living what we might see as ordinary lives, we might wonder, while we're working so hard at our jobs, providing for ourselves or our families, and staying so busy with the many things that make up the basic details of surviving, how can we also begin thriving and really enjoy our lives beyond merely keeping it all together? Our guests this week offer some simple suggestions toward ways to bring some peace and joy to our daily existences. Tara L. Cole is a writer, educator, and mom, raising school-aged kids during what can often be seen as turbulent times. She offers a few simple ways she helps guide her kids through the season of their lives, through spending time with them, providing boundaries for the media they consume, and introducing prayer into their daily lives. Amy Hannon, the founder of Arkansas Kitchen Boutique, Una Mays, finds that simple hospitality brings joy to herself and others. And although she has turned it into a beautiful business, she encourages us that hospitality doesn't have to be a show and gives us easy steps to welcome gladly and serve faithfully in ways that fill our hearts and others. Let's begin with Amy's story. My name is Amy Hannon. I live in Northwest Arkansas with my husband, Dr. Sam Hannon. I own a one of a kind kitchen boutique named after my grandmother who was so dear to me. It's called Unimaze, that's her name. And by God's grace and a lot of elbow grease, Unimaze has blossomed beyond the walls of my brick and mortar into this beautiful hospitality brand that has allowed me to write a couple of books, curate dinner experiences and culinary travel for folks around the country, plus a variety of other hospitality-focused experiences. I grew up in a small town in north central Arkansas called Mountain Home with my aunts and uncles and cousins and my grandparents. Everyone lived nearby. And my grandmother's house, Unimay's house, was where we would often gather, like weekly, play. We would eat there. We would enjoy our holidays there. And that's, she lived on the top of a hill and it's even where we would go to sled in the snow. It was at her house where I have some of my favorite memories of watching her cook for and serve the ones that she loved. And I really didn't realize it then. I realized it later, but her love for gathering people around food was leaving a really long lasting impression on me. And when I grew older, she and I even shared on more than one occasion conversations about how cooking for people was our way to show others the love of Christ that we had in our hearts. And I really valued going back and considering her purpose for why she cooked and served and invited and welcomed. So it's really no surprise that the Lord stirred in me this desire to create a hospitality brand with this hope in my heart of inspiring others to open their homes and their lives to show others the love of Jesus because she did the same for me. And I loved my time in the kitchen with Unime. She taught me so much. I opened this boutique when I was 41, like after my kids had grown, I had my kids early and I opened Unimaze in my forties, never having done retail, never expecting at all that it would be anything more than that little store. I just wanted it to be a special place where people could come in and be known and we could visit and we could talk about whether you put butter or Crisco in your pie crust. And are you hosting company this weekend? And really just lean in. And it has surprised me to no end how the Lord took that and really just lit fire under it. I can honestly say that it has delighted me to no end, more than I ever imagined truly, that I get to be a voice in a hospitality arena where I get to cheer for people 
I get to cheer them on. I get to put good recipes in their hands and watch them hop in on hospitality. It has been a supreme treat to inspire people and to help them understand that greater purpose of our welcome. And then I get to celebrate their courage and their obedience to step out and invite. It is a delight for me. I get to applaud people. I get to applaud their good works and encourage them to make hospitality not just a one-time thing or an occasional thing, but like it becomes a way of life for them. And it's just a big, fun hospitality party for all of us, truly. I have a few tips that I love to share with people who are moving toward the idea of showing hospitality. First and foremost, we have to remember this. We can't do anything on our own. We have to stay connected and remain in the vine. And I feel like when we want to host or or extend a welcome or open our homes to our friends and our neighbors, we kind of barrel forward in our own abilities and strength and with the help of Pinterest and Instagram, really. And so we have to remember more than anything to seek the Lord and ask Him to find favor with our invitation and to fill us with His love and to radiate His light through us because that's what we want. We need to be completely honest with the Lord about our worries and our concerns and ask Him to stir up joy and delight as we seek to love and serve His people. That's first and foremost. Practically speaking, keep things simple. We always want to go overboard because, again, it's what we see on social media. But just keep things simple because the hospitality of the Bible isn't fancy. And the purpose isn't to show off your life. The purpose is to share your life with others. Make simple food. Be yourself. Let the ordinary of your life lead to common ground. Common ground is what we're aching for. And common ground is where authentic connection and community grow best. And then I would even say, if you're just dipping your toe in the waters of opening your home and your life to others, just take baby steps. Rather than hosting a big dinner or extending a big invitation to a crowd, just extend a simple casual invitation to someone to just run over for dessert after supper or invite a neighbor family over to make s'mores in the backyard, or ask a coworker to run by for coffee. Because we have to remember that hospitality isn't about pulling out all the stops. It's really about building connection and community, loving and serving others well, and sharing the kindness and grace that is yours through Christ Jesus with the people around us. This is all there is to it. We extend an invitation. We offer a welcome and we gather around a shared meal for a sacred purpose to put on display the fullness of life in Christ and to share that life generously with those around us. It's that simple. I call that intentional kitchening. We extend our invitations with intention. We serve our plates with purpose to love and serve God's people well and to make Him known. we've curated our lives to look like something really that it's not. We all take beautiful pictures of our tables and our food and a pretty night at a, at a restaurant and all that. We don't take pictures of taco soup in styrofoam bowls because it's not photogenic, but taco soup in styrofoam bowls is what I serve regularly to our small groups and our neighbors and our friends and It's not photogenic and it's not pen worthy, but it's precious and it's valuable. And the purpose behind it is really what we're getting after when we as Christians invite people into our homes. And so I do think that the social media visual situation and pressure that we feel right now has a lot to do with what we're talking about here. So we've really got to slough all of that off and refocus on what what the hospitality of the Bible really means. We have to understand the value and the big picture vision and the ministry of hospitality so that it becomes a priority in our life so that we do plan for it. We do schedule it in. We do make space in our lives to follow this hospitality command and to really love people. I mean, 
There's nothing more beautiful or precious about our lives or things that matter than building relationships with people. So really, you know, the rest of all of the things that pull on us really aren't as important as sitting down with people and getting to know them and know their hearts and meet their needs and then listen for opportunities to love them and pour out grace and move towards spiritual things and love them really well. And so, but yes, we're busy and swamped and pulled on. So I really do hope that I can take the opportunities to always encourage people to understand the purpose of hospitality so that once we understand the deep eternal value of it, we will make it more of a priority in our lives and put it into practice. A lot of times when you grow a brand of some kind, you actually seem to become more and more removed from the people that you serve. And I have really been dead set on not letting that happen to Unimaze or to me. And so I continue. Yes, I travel and speak to women and I love to stand in auditoriums and hug necks and visit and get this broad message out to as many hearts and homes as I can. But there is nothing like gathering women in small groups and knowing their names and hearing their stories and getting them around shared experiences and shared meals and speaking into their lives. And that's really what I, as Unimaze grows and the Lord keeps expanding this brand, the one thing that I really love the most is creating these opportunities to to get women around the table. So I do these neat supper clubs and dinners and small group events. And I take women on weekend tours and you know, they, we, they turn into little ministry weekends and it is so, so precious to me. And that is a humble honor to be that voice in the lives of people. And it's been really fun. And it always just keeps me close to the Lord, truly. Like even this whole hospitality movement, Jesus knew better than anybody that a simple invitation for connection and community over a shared meal created the perfect opportunity for emotional, relational, and spiritual transactions to take place. And that's the hope of our hospitality. This is hospitality, overnight hospitality, not table hospitality, but I love to have little Bible reading books on the nightstands in my guest rooms so that if someone were there, believers or unbelievers, they have a little bit of inspiration. They can always maybe be beckoned to spend just a few minutes with the Lord. So yes, we have Jesus calling you know, as the Lord leads and connecting with God regularly through his word. We really like to encourage people to live that way through inspirational books, through his word, through worship, through godly community, because all of that ultimately fills us up and it fortifies our hearts to do life and ministry. And it fuels our purpose to live in a way that glorifies him and to make, make him known to others. I have recently in the last several years, empty nested you know, graduated all my children and they've all left home. So I really am in a new season of my life. And I really have been earnestly seeking the Lord in this season of my life that He will give me opportunities to be joy and light in the world. That my life and my voice, my platform, my social media, all those big things, but then even that my visits to the mailbox and my encounters with people in the grocery store aisles all of the things in my life, whether big or small, everyday ways that I would be joy and light. That is my hope to demonstrate his heart to the world. And I am so grateful. And I never would have dreamed in my whole life that the Lord would have placed me here with this kind of ministry to be able to do that, to be light and joy to the world and to encourage people to use their homes and their lives to share the love of Christ with people. You can find Amy Hannon's book, Gather and Give, Sharing God's Heart Through Everyday Hospitality and Gathering, wherever books are sold. And be sure to check out Unimaze Kitchen at unimaze.com. Stay tuned to Tara Cole's story after a brief message. Jesus Listens, the best-selling 365-day daily prayer devotional from Sarah Young, is now available for children. This book invites your children and you into an ongoing conversation with God, growing a meaningful prayer life, 
and closer relationship with Him. Kids will learn how to pray honest prayers and know that Jesus is always listening to them. This book will equip parents who want to teach their kids how to pray and talk to God, reassure their children that God is always with them, and help their kids to read Bible verses each day. This inspirational book for kids ages 8 to 12 makes a perfect gift for Christmas, birthdays, graduation celebrations, back to school, baptisms, Sunday school awards, or first communions. Jesus Listens, 365 Prayers for Kids is a wonderful tool to help your children read scripture and pray every day of the year. Available wherever books are sold. Author and educator Tara L. Cole's goals for her children are to see them develop strong relationships with Jesus as they navigate a world that sometimes is difficult. She shares some of the practices she has found helpful in guiding her kids during their school years and how prayer factors into their daily routine. Hi, this is Tara L. Cole. I am a teacher, author, podcaster, mom, and wife. I've been married for a little over 20 years to my husband, Jeremy, and we have three active boys ranging from third grade to seventh grade. So some common worries that we have as parents with our kids attending school, getting involved in things and all the busyness that they have. Quite honestly, some of my fears are like yours about them being bullied, having friends. What are they being taught in schools? What are they being exposed to on the phones and social media of their friends? Because even though I have our stuff locked down tightly, What are they seeing? Since I have time right now and I am primarily teaching online due to some chronic illness, I take my kids to and from school. So they are car line 99% of the time. But instead of seeing that as a drudgery, because quite honestly, I spend about three and a half hours in car line and getting my kids each day, I'm looking at that as an opportunity. So we're doing prayer time in the car. We're listening to podcasts or audio Bibles. We're having those conversations that are harder to have at home. So instead of looking at a drudgery, since I have the opportunity, I'm just looking as an opportunity to spend this time with my kids. I know everyone can't do that. Some of you have to put your kids on buses because you have to get to work. Maybe you have one car and that's just not an option for you. But whenever I intentionally make space in our days, whether it is car time or just okay, we're going to come home, we're going to do chores, we're going to eat dinner, and then I have nothing planned after dinner. We're just going to do whatever, take it slow, and I just sit down with the book and give them time to come up and talk to me. And I would really encourage you to just start making space in your day and praying to God and asking Him, what can we let go of here in the season and stage we find ourselves in? It can be really scary out there for parents, no matter your schooling choice, whether you choose to public school, homeschool, put them in private school, or any of the things in between. We want to protect them from the ugliness of the world. As I tell my kids, what you put in is what comes out. So if you are filling up your heart with good things, good music, TV shows, video games, YouTube channels, all those things, that's what comes out. Because I even hear my kids using the lingo that I just heard the YouTube user using on Saturday morning. And so it's really important to me to put those good things in their heart, to store up those good things in their heart. So we really protect them heavily, honestly, when it comes to internet or any of that. And what I tell them is that When they live in our house, they're going to be accountable to someone. And so we just start the conversation like that with our kids because I don't know about you all, but it feels like the issues my parents were having to deal with when I was a teenager and old enough to really think through them are stuff I'm having to talk to my elementary school son about. And that really hurts my heart that that's where we're at. So we do a balance. 
The best guidance I can give as we introduce our kids to a healthy prayer life is to look at the season and stage that you find yourself in. Because in every season and stage of life with your kids, this is going to look different. For example, when my kids were little and I could strap them into seats and give them food, we would do this at the table in the mornings. So um, while they were eating their breakfast and making a huge mess of it, we would do a quick devotional. We might sing a song from their Sunday school class, and we just do a real quick, thank you, Jesus type prayer. That was for their season and stage of life. As my kids got into the school years, that became so much more difficult. We do not have time at the breakfast table anymore because they're coming in at different times. But one of my friends years ago in a Facebook group we were in mentioned praying on the way to school with her kids. And I just picked that up and clung to it. And so that's where it fits best in our season of life right now is that when we get in the car first thing in the morning, I say, all right, it's Monday. Whose turn is it to pray first? And then that kid will pray. The next kid will pray. And then I'll end with a prayer. And so we just rotate kids every day. But get creative with introducing your kids to prayer and don't be afraid to model it in front of them. One of my sons was really struggling with friendships. He just hadn't found his people yet. There were valleys and all the things as we were praying for five years for friendships for him. God really started tugging on our own hearts. My husband and I encouraging us to switch churches. And so over a series of events moved us to a different church that had a much bigger youth group. And my sons found that they had friends in the youth group. And even this week, we were at a dinner for one of their birthday parties. And my son and 10 kids were on the other side of the table, just laughing and having so much fun. And even in that moment, I said, thank you, thank you, God, for answering this prayer. It took years for him to find his people. I am just thank God every single time in my heart for him and those friends he now has. So if you're new to prayer or new to spending time with Jesus, or maybe you're like me and you're seasoned at it, but you're in a stage or season of life where your brain is foggy and it is hard, then devotionals like Jesus Calling and others are great to just have that two minutes, five minutes of quiet time in the morning, if that's all you've got, but to get some deep meat and have that friend who's taking you by the hand and leading you to Jesus. And then right now, our family is just really praying over the school year. And again, this only takes like 30 seconds, but it is so powerful and impactful for us to pray over our kids, especially God's word, and for them to hear us praying that over them right now. I'm going to close us out today with a excerpt from Sarah Young's new prayer devotional, Jesus Lessons for Kids, August 4th. Dear Jesus, you are my good shepherd. I really want to keep my focus on you so that you're the center of my thoughts. I can't even count how many things I think about during my day. Family and friends, my animals, sports, homework, and classes. There are so many things on my mind. Help me not let any of those things crowd you out. Because the more I think about you, the more you're able to do in me and through me. Thinking about you makes me happy because I love you, Jesus. Help me remember that you are with me every minute of every day, watching over me and loving me perfectly. You're always thinking about me, and the Bible tells me that your unfailing love surrounds those who trust you. Please help me trust you more, Lord. In your always loving name, Jesus, amen. To learn more about Tara, please visit TaraLCole.com. And be sure to check out her new book, Everyday Prayers for the School Year, at your favorite retailer. If you'd like to hear more stories about simple joys, check out our interview with Don Barton. Next time on the Jesus Calling Podcast, we'll hear from Kelly Earnhardt Miller. Chief Executive Officer of JR Motorsports, which she co-owns with her brother, Championship NASCAR driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. Kelly shares what it was like growing up in a famous racing family and how she relies on a foundation of faith that keeps her honest and real in a fast-paced profession. All of us have to be able to move forward in the world and, and you know have the job you have or have the family or whatever it is because you have to have this trust 
in God and you have to have this peace that He is you know, leading what you're doing. And so I have to be reminded that um, I'm not always the one in control. Want to hear more inspirational stories of people who have been changed by a closer walk with God? Then subscribe today to the Jesus Calling Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please be sure to leave a review, which helps us reach and inspire others with these stories. Plus, if you like seeing our guests as well as hearing them, you can find video interviews available on our YouTube channel at youtube.com Jesus Calling Book on Facebook and on the Jesus Calling Instagram page.